Hey everybody, it's Callier here, and uh, I'm sitting here with my my good buddy over here, a good pal. Probably talk to her later, and also with a, another trusty friend, my number ten. Yeah. It's a little tiny thing, isn't it? Yeah, this is, you know, they're all, all of them are my favorite, of course, but this one, <laughs> this one is doomed to die the soonest. Why? Because I use it all the time. This, and of course, the buck. These two I use all the time. And as you guys know, I have, I have all of them. I don't have the wire gun yet. I'm working on it. I essentially have all the daisies from... <laughs> and these are the ones I prefer to shoot, quite honestly. And anyone, you can, anyone can go out and buy these. This is the number 10. They're around 30 bucks, 40, somewhere between 30 and 40 bucks. All right, the same thing. This one's a little bit more expensive. Has a little bit more of the wood-ish <laughs> stuff on it. And that's right. Steel, wood-ish, and then some polymer plastic uh, lever. And it doesn't even seem like a polymer. Right? That's straight up plastic trigger. And, um, and the annoying safeties. But that doesn't... That, the the wood-ish... And the polymer does not affect the fun factor of shooting. And these are just incredible shooters. As uh, you guys hear me say it over and over, um, I hit every day out, at, and not just by luck, I shoot out at 50 yards every day with these things. 50 yards. Now, sure, it's not 100 yards, but my my yard isn't a hundred yards i can't I can't shoot that far or that um uh breaking the law or annoying the uh, the neighbors or endangering someone else's life right so 50 yards is just fine more than fine for me and uh, you know I'm, I'm hitting uh steel targets so i'm plinking out at 50 yards not doing any precision shooting this but the, uh, the buck actually isn't mine. That's the kids. But uh, I probably get more use out of it these days. Eventually they'll, I don't know, maybe get some use out of it. And the, it's not really their focus these days, which is a good thing. I'm glad they're more focused on computers and cell phones, which I'm, uh, I'm perfectly fine with. They've... Uh, you know, they, they have to live in this day and age. <laughs> well, we all do, don't we? So, I have a little bit of coffee left here. All right, go ahead and cheers. Oh, look at that. I think this is a, kind of coming on the holiday spirit. Look at that. That's a holiday spirit kind of a... It's all right. By the way, trajectory... I am not, this, the end of this is not pointing at anything that it would injure or kill. Uh, so, uh, I want to share with you, let's put this over here, a little new, something new that I got. Oh, first let me show you this. Here's something I, I, I think I got this. Did I get this off of Amazon? Maybe Amazon, maybe eBay, something like that. But it's, it's quite a nice book, and it's an affordable book. There's an, a, a book out there that it's out of print. I think it's called the um, Daisy, the Plymouth, the first hundred years, or is that this one? Oh no, this is the first hundred years. It's a Daisy Plymouth book. 
And I, last I saw, I think it was like $300. It's out of print and um, hard to get. I'd like to get it, but you know, $300, as if you guys have been following me, you know, 300 bucks is just too much money for Cali Air. <laughs> I can't be spending that kind of money, right? You know what I'd spend $300 on? Even if I didn't have it, I'd scrape it up. I'd spend it on a wire gun. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't spend it on a repro, though. I'd spend it on a wire gun. Yeah. I might even spend it on a first variant number 25, 1914. Yeah, I might even do that. So, uh... <laughs> 300 so uh but yeah for a 300 dollars for a bb gun fuck that's crazy ness uh so i don't know maybe maybe someday i'll take the leap <laughs> but this this book is quite nice i actually put together my own book it's a notebook that I printed out from the web that's that's just huge. And I refer to it constantly. I'm also new information that I find. But this is a very nice book. It's got light, lots of nice pictures, right? That's why I like. I like lots of pictures with some information telling me. It really kind of shows you the years. Um, so it's nice as a reference for that. So, uh, yeah, if you come across this book, and uh, you might you probably find it on eBay pretty cheaply. Because, um, you know, not, you know, collecting daisies isn't, I don't think, all that hasn't caught on yet. I think it might have been popular at some point. But all of that, that, whatever that point was, those people are dying. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but hey, we're all we're all going there, right? <clears throat> um, yeah, you know they're all dying, and and they're letting go of their collections, and um, and I think, you know, daisies in particular, I think are going to have a uh, a kind of a, a surge. I'm already seeing it. I mean, over the past year, you know, uh, Model 25s went from, you know, under 100 bucks to now uh, upwards around 300. 300 seems to be the, the, the number. But I would not pay 300 for, well, yes, I would, for a 1914 25, Model 25. I, I would probably pay that. <clears throat> that makes me nervous. Just saying that makes me nervous. Because I, um, I think someone had mentioned, yes, $300 <laughs> for a BB gun. It's a lot of BB guns. Usually, yeah, because the BB guns that you can buy that are perfectly awesome shooters, great shooter, is uh, you get these for 30 40 bucks, right? And they'll shoot better. So far, I've noticed they'll shoot better than any antique. <clears throat> Although the antique ones shoot fine, but not as well as the new ones. Yeah, they just, you know, China's, China's got it down. I remember when China stuff was junk. Yeah, well, now they're getting better. So, uh... Now, of course, China makes everything. That's one of the things that makes me think that, um, you know, daisies are really going to pick up because there's only so many daisies that were made in America between the late 1800s and 1970 something. I mean, Daisy is still making um, guns, but now it's, you know, a lot of it, even if they're assembled here. Parts were usually made overseas. And they were made overseas probably early, early on as well. But, I mean, they were completely, everything was 
I think the metal was smelted and everything. What do I got for you? What am I showing you? This is the Daisy BB gun cleaning kit. Look at that. I just picked this up. Um, it was ridiculous how much these were selling for. So, uh, well, you know me, I was, I waited patiently and hunted one down that was, uh, you know, <clears throat> affordable and uh, and good price yeah that's that's the challenge finding these things that are affordable and in good um, condition and a lot of times uh, people rather don't know or they're not really forthright about the condition of things but this little tin cleaning kit is in quite good condition not perfect it's, uh, yeah, I got a little bit of schmutz on there. It could probably be cleaned up some. And uh, I would say this is in very good condition as opposed to excellent or perfect. <laughs> but even super cooler is it has, there it is, I know it's in there. It has all of the stuff in there. Look at that. It's got the two brushes. I don't know if this is an original. This is from the 1950s. Yeah, this is an original. Okay, I thought this was a microfiber, but it isn't. Yes, that's an original cloth. And the original gun oil. Special patches for cleaning Daisy BB gun. <laughs> now, of course, the funny thing about this, oh, let's look at this. Yeah. The funny thing about this is, um, unlike loud uh, firearms, of course, you know, I just forgot a suppressor, and they're not quite so loud. But uh, yeah, as you know, firearms, it's the power source. Use gunpowder, which is really not only loud, but it's also dirty. And so gun owners have to clean, firearm owners rather, have to clean their guns often, unless you own a Glock. And you, then you never clean your Glock. <clears throat> it's kind of a joke. It's kind of true as well. Um, yeah, I know. I know people that have never cleaned their clock the, the whole all the years they've owned them. <laughs> I know people that never cleaned their guns all the years they own them, but they probably don't shoot them all that much, uh, except for the Glocks. The Glocks you can shoot those forever, and uh, yeah, they can be dirty and whatnot. But anyway, back to the fire um, air guns. Air guns, the power source is air, <laughs> so. <laughs> you don't really need to clean your uh, air gun in the same manner that you would clean your firearm. One of the things I really love about BB guns is just there's n not just low maintenance. There is like no maintenance. You just clean it up and, you know, uh, you can drop some oil down the barrel and, uh, and that will help to keep the piston um, the spring and the piston and the cylinder uh, keep that lubricated uh, enough. And that's if you have an old BB gun. If you have one of the newer guns, maybe, I don't know, 1960s or later, certainly anything from the 80s, certainly any of these. Um, I'm not even quite sure to what extent you really need to use oil that much because they're... Uh, don't quote me on this, but my assumption is is that they're no longer using leather seals. They're using the, um, <clears throat> you know, plastic or whatever, uh, non-leather, right? So certainly by the 80s, they probably were not using leather seals anymore. And the leather seals are the ones that you want to keep nice and oiled 
these uh, other ones I've actually uh, heard some advice specifically from Tom Gaylord I believe <laughs> the uh, the proclaimed I don't know if it's self-proclaimed but the proclaimed godfather of uh, air guns <clears throat> says you don't even use any oil on those new <clears throat> I want to say what the name is uh, plastic it's not plastic no polymer uh, mm, synthetic we'll just call it a synthetic seal a synthetic um, yeah seal as opposed to uh, uh, the uh, leathers the leathers need oil for show but you know cleaning the barrel and whatnot yeah I you know, every time you shoot an air gun, you're clean, you're cleaning it with a perfectly clean. The air isn't like the uh, PCP air, which uh, might have moisture in it. So you, you're not even really concerned about um, fouling up the barrel with uh, moisture. The only thing would be atmosphere. It's if you're in a wet sort of atmosphere and you might want to keep it oiled for for purposes of having it not rust of course the newer guns they're all painted they paint these things so uh they're almost almost impervious unless you scratch them or something um to the uh rust and daisy's been painting barrels since geez since the 50s i think easily right so this is kind of cool. Yeah, I've seen these go for way too much money. It's funny when you see them online, you, you just see them by themselves and they look like, you know, like they'd be almost the size of a carbine. And <laughs> when you get got it in the mail and it's just this little tiny <laughs> came in this right here. I it said it was uh, delivered and, I, and <clears throat> I didn't see any big package. I was, about to start complaining that I didn't receive it, but here it is. How cool. Super groovy, I'd say. <clears throat> yeah, notice this. It has the uh, the 25 on it. The number 25 pump carbine. Team said this stand is actually, a t I, I believe it's a tabletop stand. <clears throat> and they, in the 1950s, came out with that stand and this little cleaning kit. And the cleaning kit could also be at the base of the stand and the stand would be here and the, and the, and the go over top. <clears throat> yeah, sort of like this, so would be on like a table stand that must have been slick it'd be fun to uh to be able to find the stand yeah i think i'll keep an eye out for that <clears throat> this is oh look at this this is very telltale the model, the variant that's on here is a late variant. That's a 1950s variant. So they actually are displaying the 1950s gun as opposed to the original uh, 1914 or 1932 model. The 1930, uh, 32 or 34, 36, 38. Oh, geez starting to get the numbers but in the 30s they started etching them and uh, etching the receiver and so that that first model that was etched and i want to say 1934 i could be wrong on that but that first model that's etched very popular even right now amongst collectors very popular <clears throat> And that's what got me into the daisies was this actual model 25 strangely enough 
I don't shoot them anymore. Not so much. That's why the only number 20, I want two 20, I'm, I'm looking for two model uh, 225. Yeah. See, the problem is, is it's called a number 25. It's not called a model number 25 because model refers to the year that it was first put out. Um, and they don't always refer to their guns in model form. So this was just simply called a number 25. So the uh, model, the first variant model 25 is 1914. I'd like to have one of those. And I would also like to get my hands on a 1977 variant. And I won't go into why I would like a 1977 variant, but um, yeah, that's what I'm looking for as far as the number 25s. And then that's it. I don't think I would really um, invest much more in any more 25s. I just have uh, too many of them, right? Uh, but this is what got me into daisies. And then I just... Figured out ah, what the heck. I'll get a Red Rider. Let me check out these Red Riders. Uh, kind of figured the Red Rider was a waste. Of, you know, kind of silly because you couldn't just keep it shouldered and, you know, like this and, and shoot you have to kind of uh, crank it. And then, so I, just for that purpose alone, I didn't even bother with them. But I figured I'd try one. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was silly because I was such a fanboy for the number 25. And then I tried the Red Rider and realized, man, you can fill these things up with, oh, 500 to 1,000 rounds. 500 to 1,000 rounds. The number 25, you can only put, what, 52, 42 to 52 rounds in there or something like that. That's, that's it, 52. What, what are you going to do with 52 rounds, right? You spend more time loading yeah just like firearms and geez or pellet guns right so you know what really turned me on to bb guns and daisy was the amount of trigger time you got in rather than the amount of loading time or cleaning the gun time or uh did i say loading the yeah because if you got pellets man get to like if you're shooting pellet guns, what you're mostly doing with pellet guns is loading them. You're not actually shooting them as much as you're loading them, right? BB guns are kind of that epiphanous moment in my life as a shooter of, wow, this is the holy grail for anyone that's truly in the shooting, just shooting, you know, like plinking, target or whatever. If, you, if that's what you love to do, this is the Holy Grail. It, it, nothing touches these Daisy BB guns, and certainly not the lever action. You can put 500 to 1,000 rounds in and then just, just shoot to your heart's content and desire. That's ridiculous. And hit steel targets out of 50 yards. That's just ridiculous. Come on. And for 30 to 40 bucks... Yeah, see, if that doesn't float your boat, if that doesn't make you go, hmm, you got a point there. You just load the thing and shoot it and hit stuff uh, for like, you know, days on end. Not doing anything other than rack them and shoot them, right? Yeah, if it's floating your boat, if that's not making you go, you know, you got at bigger time, wow. Then you don't really like to shoot. What you like to do is maybe collect, maybe you like to pull triggers and hear things go bang. <laughs> maybe you like, to, maybe you're not so much a shooter, but a sniper, right? Where you like to focus on something at long range and, you know, hit like a dime out at a thousand yards or something, right? Yeah, then you're not a shooter. Hey, it's not, so, it's not a bad thing. Just saying, you're not a shooter. A shooter 
somebody that likes to get their hand on a trigger and shoot the propellant, whatever is in here, <laughs> the propellant, <laughs> shoot your projectile, that's what I was trying to say, uh, and hit your target. And, and that's, that's what a shooter likes to do. So I think shooters are different than maybe your tactical guys or your, you know, your, uh, you know, sport, maybe like, you know, paintball sport guys or, you know, uh, or even a sniper, right? I mean, a sniper isn't out there shooting, 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 shooting. They're getting everything, triangulating, making sure everything's on, you know, the wind is, is right, and the windage, and gravitational pull, <laughs> all kinds of interesting things I know very little about. Um, yeah, they're not shooting so much, are they? So, I know this is just a semantic, I'm playing games here, but, you know, serious, a little bit serious, right? If you really like to shoot, then uh, how do you beat? How do you beat this? Now, sure, you can buy other BB guns. That's for sure. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what I like about the Daisies is they've been around forever. And they were gangster about it, too, man. I mean, they just came in in the late 1800s. They just came in and just start absorbing anybody that made uh, what variant is this? The rear sight also holds the spring in rather than, uh, oh yeah, I know, isn't that cool? This rear sight. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's how it is anymore on this one. Huh, yeah, it probably still is. Yeah, it's probably still right on that. Mm, this is the number, this is, uh, I know very little about the number 10 because there's no information on the number 10. This is a new, a new gun that Daisy put out. Brand spanking new. A, uh, yeah, it's a number 10. That's it. Well, maybe I can give you some information here. Model 10. No, they refer to it as a Model 10. So, you know, what's going on here is they're they they're really not holding on to their old naming. Yeah. They're not holding on to their old naming conventions because, you know, in all the vintage guns, the model refers to the year that it came out. So, I don't know. Maybe this is, maybe this was made in uh, 2010. Could be. If you know, let me know. That would be my assumption because the model has uh, historically meant uh, the year that it was first produced, right? So yeah, this is this is great. And look, it has the uh, the single point sling <laughs> attachment. Yeah, that's what I call this modern day single sling attachment. <clears throat> So, yeah, if you like to get a lot of trigger time in, um, then uh, you can't beat the daisy. Right. Why the daisy? Why do I pick the daisy over anything else? Uh, yeah, the Model 10 carb, carbine or carbine, depending on how you like to say that, <laughs> depending on, on your roots. I have no roots. I'm an alien. So, uh-oh, uh what is it, Skeeter? Calm down, Skeeter. Calm down. You know, a coyote just walked past the past us right before we started. Uh, yeah, uh, had a had a squirrel in its mouth. Looked mighty happy. <laughs> yeah, we got koi dogs. Um, whole, I think two different packs of koi dogs right in our backyard. It's really cool. As long as they don't eat our dogs, it's cool. Or our cat. Or our fish. Uh, so, <clears throat> so why am I picking the uh, daisies? Well, yeah, because of the history, man. Late 1800s by uh, 1900, 1930s gangster style, they just took over everybody, right? 
uh, early 1900s, they took over Markham, and uh, uh, they took over Atlas, they took over um, Her Harlequin, Har Har they just took everybody over, man. And, um, and so when you are buying daisies, you're all kind of almost buying all the other BB guns that were <laughs> around at the time. Because they, <laughs> there is one company, I remember the story uh, where Daisy took over this one BB company, BB gun company, and they took all of the stock and all of the gear, the production gear, the tools, and threw them into the river. So, like I said, I don't, I, I don't quite know why they did that, but um, but they bought them, bought bought them out. They seemed to buy these people out, and um, they disappear, and then Daisy keeps going. <laughs> it's just an innocent little flower, a little Daisy. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's a very, very interesting history, I think, that goes with these guns. And then just the, man, the, uh, efficiency of a $34 wood steel gun made in China. Manufactured by Daisy. Ah, I don't know. If you don't get it. <laughs> no, I'm sure you can understand the historical significance of, of these guns over the years. Um, yeah, and they're still great to shoot, so you can still shoot these things. You, you know, I have a 1917. I think I, I have a 19... 16, 1913, 1913. I have some guns from the early 1900s, like, you know, and, um, and they all still shoot. Now, the problem is the ammo prior to 1934 or 32, yeah, something around there, the ammo prior to that was actually slightly larger in diameter. Or it was of different diameter. I'm pretty sure it was slightly larger. And um, and so when you put the smaller ammo in there, it doesn't shoot with the full intended power. Um, so uh, that's a little something, a little tip about those earlier guns if you're using the... Uh, and plus they were designed to shoot lead ammo, which is softer. So, um, so it's hard to find. <sighs> Very Christmassy. Hard to find. No, that's an understatement. I have not been able to find the required number six shot, lead number six shot. I have not been able to find it. Been looking for over a year or so for it now. Haven't been able to find it. So. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so if anybody out there has a lead on some number six shot, let me know. I have gotten some number six, you know, sh shotgun shell shot, but that's not the same stuff. So. Um, yeah, the number six shot, that number six shot is not the number six shot that, um, yeah, I've, I've gotten that and, and looked, that's not the six shot. It's, that's actually smaller, those pellets. So the, uh, the number six that supposedly is required, Hey, I'm not talking from experience either, because if I had some, I can confirm that indeed this old vintage shot is called number six shot. A lot of the old vintage stuff I, I notice is, is called number two shot. So, uh, and I've bought some of that just in case to see if it would work. Uh, so, 
In general, I tend not to shoot the uh, anything prior to 1934. I I don't collect many of those, um, and most of what I shoot when I shoot the vintage guns are from 1934 onwards. So, uh, yeah, now, you know, I do shoot the other guns. I, I don't just always shoot these, but these are the ones that are always around because the vintage ones are always, I'm always cycling through. I'll get like a, a crate of, uh, of the vintage ones. And, um, yeah, I'm doing but then I go ahead and clean them up, create them up, put them back in and rotate them uh, to the next batch. And sometimes I don't bring the next batch out. So here I am with my trusty, trusty or the buck, you know, I, 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 it's hard to say if these guns are any different from one another. It's hard to say they're the same size. They look the same. The only thing that seems to be different is the saddle ring and the uh, foregrip right uh, well the etching on the side but that's of no and uh, and the stocks right now you know the usual complaint these are that the you know they're youth guns so they're they're like mini carbines <laughs> or carbines I'm all self-conscious about how I say carbine, carbine, because I, 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 I say it both ways, quite honestly. Carabiner, carbiner. No, no, I don't say carabiner, carabiner. I say car, carabine, uh, carabine, carabine. So I'd call it a carabine. <laughs> carabine, carabine, I don't know. Uh... Yeah, I think they're the same thing. I think the buck and the number 10 are the same thing. And the, uh, and so is the, the cub, the 102, the Daisy 102 cub, I think is, they're all the same. So, uh, if anybody knows, a has any proof otherwise, because everything I can see you know, I, I have not taken them apart. I tend not to take, uh, especially the newer guns, apart. I haven't, yeah, I haven't taken any. any yeah, I don't have a lot of newer guns, and I don't, you know, haven't had to take them apart. Um, oh, that's not true. I did. I, the Christmas dream. I, I, I got one of those Christmas dreams. <laughs> the goofy Red Rider with the Buck Jones... Um, compass and sundial on it i love the damn thing they're great shoots great but it did jam uh not jam up it just kind of stopped working i would i would rack it and nothing so um daisy uh, over in rogers uh i got in touch with them and they were happy to replace it and um yeah the, that thing works great but <laughs> goofy Goofy as heck, yeah, they put the compass and whatnot using the Buck Jones design and just kind of slapping it all onto a Red Rider. That's Hollywood, folks. Right. They also put the logo on the Red Rider on the at Christmas Dream. They put the logo on the other side because the actor was left-handed. Who was that actor? Was it Coy McCulkin? I don't think so. Some other actor. But the actor was left-handed, so um, they wanted to be able for the logo to show up. So they printed the logo on the other side and then put the compass and the sundial on this side where the logo would have been. Just a little FYI there. Uh. So... Do I have anything else to share with you here today? No, I don't know if you can tell, but the uh, the sky, the air behind us is it, it's it's in Sacramento. We've got fires above us, below us, and to the side of us. Um, 
yeah, so essentially we're surrounded by fire right now. And boy, is it smoky. The air is not very healthy to breathe right now. Um, and it's getting cold, boy, is it getting cold. It's funny, I don't know how there can be fires when it's so cold. <laughs> I know it doesn't make sense, but it just seems like when it's cold, fire wouldn't want to have anything to do with that cold but uh yeah yeah oh silly me what am i talking about all right let's get this number 10 make it happen right now huh yeah 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 we don't we don't do a uh picking a daisy episode without <clears throat> blowing off a few rounds right all right this is to the, uh, what was there? One, two, three, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I'd say that's about 10, 10 yards, maybe? 10 yards, I think. Can you see the chicken? Can you see the chicken out there? Oh, try to get a headshot on the metal chicken. There we are. Out on the metal chicken. Saucepan. Got saucepan. Let's see. I'm gonna unplug this. Because I don't wanna want to shoot in the direction of our good buddy. There you go. Yeah, I'm just going to get to the other side of you here so I can hit these targets. You just go ahead and relax. <laughs> relax, Skeeter. All right, let's do this. So I will be um, on our next show. I'm going to... Oh, this is out at 40. Yeah, this this is 40. I'm guessing. Yeah, it could be 45. Somewhere between 40 and 45. Shovel head. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? So yeah, so you know, the shorter stock and shorter barrel and everything. Uh not uh you don't have as much of a sight radius but um you know come on we're only shooting out at 50 and give yourself a little bit of uh, a challenge right now i'm going to try to hit out at 50 i don't know let's see nice yeah you, you know i hit something because you hear a little tink you don't hear a little tink then that was a miss 50 can you imagine isn't that crazy for 30 dollars 30 40 bucks the number 10 daisy hitting out at 50 yards it's crazy now uh, yeah i'm adjusting my uh you know my point of aim of course Ooh. This one's a hard one. There we go. <clears throat> yeah. I mean... I haven't reloaded this. I don't even remember. There's another metal chicken. Oh, missed the saucepan. Sloppy work there. There we go. And let's go right back to our close up target. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I'm gonna
I'm going to be working on uh, cataloging and bringing in more of the guns, taking them out of the safe and um, uh, showing them to you guys. Uh, maybe even get, eventually I'm going to get to chrony them. Now, chronographing hasn't been like a huge uh, priority because we all know that these things only shoot uh, what 300 300 fps right usually uh your kid's pellet gun is going to be somewhere around 900 to 1200 fps right so um yeah these are these are uh very low powered um and uh, you know these came out in the late 1800s and only one lawsuit which I think it was a bogus lawsuit, but it came out in the eighties on a kid that the kids were playing around, got shot in the eye, went, hit his brain. And then the subsequent brain damage, uh, he died from I'm not laughing at that. It's just that, um, in all those years, only one attributed death and it wasn't even a very, you know, it wasn't properly attributed, right? I was just mishandling. Um, so yeah, late 1800s, these things have been out and only one attributed death. So, and that's because they're not that. Now, funny enough, back in the day, they were the most powerful of the BB guns. But nowadays, th these are more around the range of a, uh, like an airsoft or something, right? Uh, now, it doesn't mean you shouldn't exercise the same safety, of course. So, you know, if you're watching this and uh, wondering about that, yeah, you know, always have the barrel pointing in a safe direction, even if you're not handling it, even if it's empty, even if you have the safety on. Barrel always in a safe direction, right? finger always off the trigger and eye protection if you got it right well if have it right have some sort of eye protection if you don't wear glasses already um and if they're not shadow resistant glasses make sure you have some eye protection especially with these because you know i have had bb's come back straight at me from um from 10 15 yards away 20 yards away even yeah so um <gasps> calm down skeeter calm down <laughs> so yes you should be very uh careful especially with uh bb guns uh with eye protection and only because you know it could it literally could bounce back and hit you in the eyeball you know uh, anything else? Right. So I'm going to be bringing some stuff out. I don't know what I'm going to start tackling next. Um, all of this stuff I'm listing on my uh, website, the new website, pickingadaisy.com. I got a .com, guys. Pickingadaisy.com. And uh, check it out. Yeah, I'm, uh, this is kind of where these videos and where... Uh, a lot of the photos and the articles and the information that I've been getting uh, on the daisies, that's where I'm putting it. And um, if you have any information that you would like to add, certainly get in touch with me through the website, pickingadaisy.com. Uh, just click on the contact there and um, have an email form. So just uh, send it right to me. Um, yeah, if you have any information or if you have any questions or any suggestions uh, for the show, let me know. Um, geez, is there anything else, Skeeter? What do you think, Skeeter? Anything else we need to tell these, these wonderful people? All these internet people? Got any clues? No? <laughs> aloha? You gonna tell them aloha? Really, what are you, some sort of Hawaiian dog? Oh, you are. All right. Skeeter is actually from Hawaii. 
I always forget that. Uh, yeah, if you have it, if you guys have any suggestions or any um, preferences as to what sort of guns you would like to see, uh, uh, would you like to see all like all the early guns, like you know the top five or top ten of my earliest guns, or would you like to see all the Model Twenty Fives that <laughs> I've collected? Um, would you like to see the whole collection of Red Riders? Would you like to see whole collections or single, uh, really in-depth, uh, uh, you know, sort of looks at particular guns? Um, you know, if you don't answer, I'll just do all of it. <laughs> but if you give me an answer, maybe I'll get to that sooner than later. Metal chicken hiding. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Miss, I never miss unless the camera's on. You guys know that, right? So. All right. Well, hey. Um, I will see you sooner than later. Um, I'm really kind of putting a lot more time and effort into picking a daisy and, um, <laughs> literally and figuratively, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, these are the, the daisies are just going up and up in value and, um, my uh, bank account does, my, you know, my income doesn't seem to be going up and up in value. So. You know, I'm getting as many of these as my income allows. And, uh, um, and you know, it, it's kind of cool. I like to see that these guns, not this gun here, but, you know, the vintage versions of these guns, I like to see that they're going up in value. That's really cool. Um, so I, I, I really look forward to that. Um, oh. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.